hype on the new Star Wars movie? I haven't seen Dune yet, but that didn't stop me. This Lego Ornithopter set looked so cool to me that I just had to go out and buy it and take a look at it in today's video. It's $165 with 1,369 pieces, and I mean, the box makes it look, frankly, amazing. Opening up the box, you'll find your normal numbered Lego bags, but there were a couple of oddities compared to your normal Lego unboxing experience here. For Baron Harkonnen, they included what is at least new and weird to me, this paper pack to hold his very large cape piece. They they also included this box, which looks like it might hold Harry Potter's wand, but it actually has the eight wing blades for the ornithopter. Not all that exciting to most normal people, but it's certainly a unique piece of Lego packaging for something inside of a box. In my hands here, I have all eight minifigures. We'll take a look at them one by one. Like I said, I haven't seen the movies, so uh, we might need some help on this one. Fortunately, inside of the instruction manual, alongside kind of the normal, like, hey, this is, uh, you know, in Star Wars, it would be a UCS set. Like, collector set, you know, jargon that they put in here. But what's really cool is Dune is a relatively new, like, movie franchise, so they included little bios for each of the characters included in the set. Like, that's super helpful. Like, if you've seen the movie once, you're probably not going to remember everyone, so it's very helpful to have this sort of thing here. So it's going to help me with this review. The first character up here is Paul Artreides. I think he looks like the guy from Squid Game, quite frankly, and there's nothing that will change my mind on that. Compared to what we see in the movie, at least from my Google search and what my cameraman says, is that he's usually in another outfit in the movies, but, you know, I think LEGO wanted to include some unique outfits because otherwise all of them would be kind of gray armor outfits. So I think it's nice from that standpoint. The minifigure to me overall looks nice, but I can't unsee Squid Game Guy. Next up, we have Dr. Liet Kynes, also known as uh, Poe Dameron. Oh no, wrong. <laughs> I looked at the Google and I was like, that's not him. Would the real Dr. Liet Kynes please stand up? Uh, she looks really nice. This is a very well done figure. I love that it's got the respirator on there. I think that's a fantastic look on one side of the head. And flipping the head around, we'll have the face without the respirator. I also really like the cape on this character. Just using a cape that isn't the standard rounded off cape, it's got some like jagged edges on the bottom. It makes it look really worn, which is super nice here. Next we have Duke Leto Artredes, the real Poe Dameron here. And having looked him up in the movie, the one thing I would say with this character is I would have loved to see some gray highlights in the hair. They have the gray highlights in the beard, which is great, but I think the hair and therefore the overall look for his hair is just too dark looking. Compared to what I see in the movie, it just looks off to me. The rest of his outfit looks quite nice and is uh, very well armored up and I guess ready to go into battle. Is that what they do in the movie? Yeah. Yeah, all right, good. He's the only one without like a, no, I guess she doesn't have any weapons, but he, he's just got binoculars. He, he doesn't have like a stick or anything to fight people with. Lady Jessica here looks, I mean, this is really cool. It's an all gold character. The print on it is, you know, there, but it's not like blaring in your face. She looks nice with her hair piece, but she has a second face. And on that second face, there's like a golden veil that perfectly matches your golden hood piece to really complete the look of the character. This is my preferred look on this character. I think this looks amazing and it's really great that you can at least do both, but certainly that Lego went to the lengths of making it as accurate as possible with the all gold outfit. This minifigure is killer. It's Gurney Halleck. I love that they gave him the extra armor piece to make him look extra bulky like he does in this picture here. He's got a big butcher sword and overall I think this is a pretty faithful recreation of the character in Lego. Another good minifigure to the collection. Shani. 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 Oh, this is her. She's she's the one that dates Tom Holland. Okay, this is Shawnee from Dune. So they did give her blue eyes because she does have blue eyes. I see it. Yes, that that's a yeah, that looks good. I like that. And she's kind of got the same armor set. I wonder if it's the exact same just without the uh, bulky piece on top. So they both have the same base armor, just different neck, head, and hair accessories. So she has a scarf around her neck, obviously a white sword here. Overall, looks like a really good character. Nice recreation again from the movie. So far, I'm pretty impressed with these minifigs even though I haven't seen the movie. Jason Momoa, the one that plays Aquaman. All right, Duncan Idaho. Why would you name a character Idaho? So this is the training outfit? Yeah, it's kind of, it's like a casual outfit. It's not like- Oh, like, like Peter Griffin casual. Yeah. Yeah, okay. We got the Peter Griffin Aquaman combo from Fortnite here. I, I, I'm, we're skipping this one. Oh, Holy my. crap, he is ugly. Wow. This is Baron Harkonnen and I mean, this is the character that has caused the great Lego cloth shortage for Star Wars because they had to save all of the cloth for this piece here. And I'll tell you, it is an amazing piece. It looks great. It flows super nicely all the way 
around and down to like the ground like there's a lot of space here like you could fit like two more minifigures between his legs and the bottom just wild that they went this far because as far as i can tell there are versions of this character where he doesn't need that i just see a picture of him sitting down and it looks like he's normal but then when he's standing in every scene that i can see like at a quick glance he definitely needs this so uh yeah um this is a crazy character i don't even know why they would bother printing the torso but let's see if they did they definitely printed it there's no way they didn't print it right Wow, like, wow, they didn't print it. I say this a lot and it's like a weird complaint to have. It's not really a complaint. Lego cuts corners in so many ways to save money with like Lego Star Wars, for example. And I find it funny because they will be wasteful in so many ways. So for example, on a character that wears a cape, like why would you print the torso or the back? Like Lego often will print the torso in the back on something that's covered up anyway. And I like that they didn't print it because that means they didn't go and waste a bunch of money. I, I say a bunch of money, it's probably pennies per character, if that. But still, it always felt wasteful to me when they would do stuff like that. And so I really appreciate uh, it not being wasteful this time, which is a weird way to say it, but that's, I mean, that's what it is to me. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to get this back on there. Um, but that's Baron Harkonnen, probably the highlight minifigure of the set, uh, for sure. I mean, overall, I would say the character selection is well done here. Pearson, you've watched the movies. Is there anything missing? Uh... A big uh means no, because nothing comes to mind immediately. So this is what the Ornithopter looks like with everything kind of retracted into the body. And it is absurdly sleek. I mean, not even talking about its accuracy, just like from a like what is aesthetically pleasing in a design, this is that. It looks so cool to me. I mean, it feels like Star Wars and a lot of people say Dune is kind of like Star Wars and so I get that, but I mean, this feels like it belongs in Star Wars. I don't want to have to hold it the whole time. So this thing does have retractable landing gear, like real good retractable landing gear. And that's something you don't see a lot. Even in some of the higher end Lego Star Wars sets, they'll have landing gear, but it won't really necessarily be retractable. This is fully retractable landing gear, probably the best implementation of something like that I've ever seen. So on the side of the ship, and this will be on both sides, there's this little knob. The only downside to that placement of the knob is when the wings are folded in, it's kind of hard to access. And let me show you it from the other side too. You can see the knob is still there. So it does work on both sides. It just, again, unfortunately, if you have the wings folded inwards, it's a little bit hard to get at. So all we have to do is twist the knob towards the back of the ship and you can see the landing gear fold out there and I'll fold it out again for you. And you can just see how beautifully it expands. I mean, it's the coolest feature for landing gear I've ever seen and it's not even close. Let me show you what it looks like as we place it down onto the table. You'll see it has a little bit of, you know, suspension to it just kind of naturally. So you place it down and there you go. And it also leans forward, maybe about 10 degrees. So I like that it gives it a bit of an aggressive look when it's actually landed down on a table or a shelf, wherever you want to display it. Like this could pretty easily fit into my shelf back here when it's in the retracted position, which is nice. Uh, of course, when these wings come out, not gonna be the same deal. While we're on the topic of display solutions, Brickshell Cases sponsored this video, and here I have their vertical display stand for the Dune Ornithopter. It's done in a very high quality black acrylic with some white accents on the base to create their logo. There's also genuine Lego studs integrated into the base to display all of the minifigs and a special spot for Baron Harkonnen. The stand keeps it super simple to remove the Ornithopter and play with its great play functions if you still want to, but you can also display the Ornithopter in another interesting way, with the brick shell wall mount, which looks amazing. It's very artistic and you can still fit all of the minifigures on it. It looks great and frankly, I wish I had one because it would look super dope. Finally, if you're looking for a dust-free display solution without having to do all of this, they offer this beautiful looking display case that allows you to display your ornithopter with the wings folded up in a completely dust-free environment. You can check them out at brickshellcases.com where their entire Dune range is available now. Zooming into the cockpit here, the shaping on it is done very well. There's again, some very smart design techniques that allow them to get this like perfect shape to it. They also had these like large translucent pieces come in separate bags so that they were, you know, a little bit more protected from getting scratched up during the shipping process. The other ones came also in pretty good condition as well. So overall, I think that looks nice. That's very important with a set like this. Now to actually access the cockpit, again, you'll be able to do this on both sides, but we really only need to see one side. You can lift this entire panel up 
and then we'll do the other side just for good measure. Now, just while I happen to have this up, you'll notice on the side, there's this little logo here. That's printed, again, $165 set, not a sticker. Man, that is nice. So there's basically like this middle support beam that literally doesn't move or go anywhere. So it can be a bit of an issue when you wanna actually place a minifigure inside. It's a little bit of a tight fit. You're trying to work your hand around. Like it's not ideal. So they actually had a very interesting solution to this. And that's that you can actually remove this entire piece that the minifigs sit on. Now, this isn't the first time I think I've ever seen something like this. I'm pretty sure I've seen it in some Star Wars stuff before. Both characters can be seated pretty easily in there, and I think the seating area looks quite nice, and we can just place them back inside. There's just a couple of studs that'll hold them down on there, and so we'll get them in there and push it down to make sure it attaches. And just like that, you have the two characters in there. You can close that up and they are good to go, ready to fly off into battle or wherever they're going. Lastly, inside of here, there's these little handlebars and a control panel that's printed. So nice detail on the inside. Just below the cockpit here, we've got these little lights. These can be pointed down. So uh, it feels like a helicopter searchlight to me, just pointing him down to like look at whatever's down there. But you know, that's a nice small function to be able to move slightly. Now we got to talk about the actual wind. So these are very large, almost rubbery pieces, but not quite rubber. They're still plastic. They're just like a softer plastic than normal Lego, I would say. We got eight of them in the set. And what's kind of interesting with mine is that one of them came burnt. So the tip of it is just kind of like charred like, I, I don't know if burnt really is the true word for it, but that's what it looks like to me. But for the vast majority of people and seven out of eight of my wings, they look amazing. I think it's a really good design. It's something that's super clean and nice and mount, like, like having it be able to bend like this just adds to the feeling for this ship as you'll see when we actually get into the functionality of it. So let's get into that. This whole thing can essentially spread its wings and fly. So there's this Technic piece on top here and you just have to lift this up and like push it forward. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna push it forward. Bam, just like that. The ornithopter is like ready to go. It's got an incredible wingspan, a wingspan so large that it makes it hard to fit inside of any particular case or shelving. Like that is one of the drawbacks of the wingspan. As great as it looks, if you are someone that wants to put it in a thing, that's gonna be difficult, if not impossible to do, depending on what you own. So you can see they look really nice. They move kind of as you move the ship. They just have a nice, like, natural movement to them. They're not stiff and rigid, which is great. The tail of this ship, and really the whole spine, is incredibly strong because this is where you hold it. You hold it, like, way at the back. And so it's quite incredible that they were able to build something strong enough to allow you to do that. You know, the whole front end of it that weighs 80% more than the back end doesn't just snap off immediately. So there is another functionality to this. It's this kind of black ridge here. And so when I push down on that, you can see it moves a little bit. And if you get it in a good flow, you can keep pushing it over and over again. And it makes it look like the wings are flying. It's quite an incredible feature that they were able to work into this. And so even if I give it a little shake, it makes it look an even, even crazy. Oh shoot, I should probably retract the landing gear. We're flying. Now the true look of the ornithopter flying through the sky. I mean, that's just crazy to see. You're not gonna be able to see it in there, but there's basically a Technic piece. Uh, it's a more rubbery Technic piece as well. And it basically bends over another piece as you push down on this and that lets it get its like slight wing movement. It's just crazy to me that they included a feature like this and it, it, like, it works so well. All of the features on this set just work so well, so consistently. Like I mentioned earlier, you do get a little bit easier access to that landing gear knob now. So if we wanted to go in and land this ship, we would just push it back, landing gear comes out, and we can land it much easier. I feel like I'm a bigger fan of this. Like I think this just looks sleeker, but like I can totally see going for this as well because it's really imposing. So now we have to talk about what is undoubtedly the biggest flaw in this build. And to set the stage for that, it's important, you know, $165 set, and more important than that, 18 plus, this is a set undoubtedly made for adults. So what a lot of people have pointed out and what I will also harp on a little bit here is the fact that they're not using color matching Technic pieces for things that show through the outside. For as great as this set is, it is a huge flaw. I mean, they really should reconsider their theory with this. This is a set made for adults and the reasoning for them having these different color pieces here, like the reds and the yellows and 
even on the side where you have a little blue that you're gonna see show through, is that they wanna make the build process easier. They wanna coddle the builder. It's still step-by-step -step instructions with cut up numbered bags. It's already really easy. It doesn't need these like really bright colors so that you know what goes where. You're gonna figure it out. Like I understand doing that on the interior, but for something that's gonna show through on the exterior and for something that's as prevalent as the reds, the yellows, and the blues are, it's a really big downside and it's something that people are gonna to start to take notice of. So what I'm really hoping a set like this can do is get LEGO to reconsider their stance on something like that because, I mean, you're needlessly hindering the look of this set. At an age rating of 18 plus, you can no longer really make the argument that it's about like making sure you can build it because like, if you can't build this, why are you buying? I don't know, I don't wanna be mean. Anyway, the point is this set would have been better if Lego would just change their mind on something that they should probably change their mind on. I think for $165, just as a Lego fan, judging a Lego set and its value with eight figures, an amazing build, it's worth the money. I also think if you're a Dune fan, it's certainly worth the money. This is a buy. Like, like if you're looking at this and you're like, should I buy it? The answer is yes, you should buy it. Again, as someone who hasn't even seen the movie, I was interested enough to go and buy it. And having now had the full experience, I think it's totally worth the $165 asking price. Like, they knocked it out of the park on this one. Eight. 9.5, 9 out of 10 is fair. All right, final score, 9.5 out of 10. I'm going there. Let me know what you guys think about this one in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. You can check out more LEGO set reviews on the end screen now.